Welcome back to Little Sneakers Podcast. I'm here with my friend Jacob Furman Matera. Hey, buddy. Thank you. Uh, we're holding hands as though I'm trying to give him strength at a funeral. I'm so sorry for your loss, Jake. It feels like a funeral. It does. Um, we have no idea what happened to Cal Donjala. The only thing, uh, only communication we've received from him was a text saying, do not even think of touching that fucking coin. This one. I, Jake, I will. All right. I will break your fucking fingers off and shove them up my ass. <laughs> if you touch that coin while our dear friend isn't here. <laughs> All right. Okay. Well, I would I, do the same for you though. Thank you. Is there anything you don't want John to touch? Should you be out again that you want me to break his fingers off and shove oh up my, my ass God. if he touches? If he touches, probably I keep a couple of snacks stuffed in the cushion here. So as long as he stays hands off, I should be okay. Okay. Yeah. I, I will keep that in mind, but I'm sure Cal Dunjala will be back next week. Stronger, harder and more pale than ever I, he's really he's going the opposite trajectory of what you're supposed to right i'm concerned he's actually in hospice right now we're, uh, we're very concerned for john he would be a very chill hospice patient patient <laughs> he's just hitting the morphine button like this <laughs> dude i'll try to like uh, initiate conversations about serial killer shit with him, and he's like, "Dude, I don't care. Like, I, I don't, oh, yeah. I don't watch this stuff. Yeah, this is you, man. Yeah, dude, I could see him in the hospice, uh, a priest giving him his last rites, and he <laughs> just goes gay. <laughs> <laughs> he gives his last rite is actually like dipped in IPA. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we miss you, John. Yeah, we'll see you soon enough. Happy birthday in heaven, maybe." Well, brother, we're not even going to entertain the thought of an Impractical Jokers podcast. I mean, I can try this. Just, don't oh, you right. fucking dare. All right, I won't touch it. You see that sticker I got next to that coin? That is, that is a very sexy sticker. Uh, uh, a gentleman gave me this sticker of three ladies tongue kissing, and he drew the drawing. I didn't know you could draw those kind of things, but I, I like it. Can I have his number? I have a I have a list I'd like to send him of things I'd like drawn. If you had to watch a cartoon lady get porked and you could commission some kind of art based upon that thought, what would it be? Like, do you mean like watch her get porked, like watch the cartoon or like watch it be drawn? You know what I mean? That's two different like things. Like a take your daughter to work day kind of thing? <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean like... Watching a, a cartoon lady get pork is a cart. It's just a cartoon, right? That's just a. But if he, if I'm watching him draw it, like Picasso, draw this, then I'd like to see a. This would be more of a Dickasso. <laughs> it was his goo period. <laughs> <laughs> it's yeah. It's pretty. It's pretty fascinating what what he does. Yeah, it's uh, it's animated porn, and I love it. I've tried. When those Simpsons one pop up on the side. I don't like what they do with The Simpsons, but... Lois I, Griffin? Yeah, I like seeing her get poor. Yeah, you're like, go ahead. Go ahead, Lois. Mm -hmm. The red hair. It'll get you every time. Yeah, they will. Somebody posted a picture of themselves dressed like Lois Griffin. Uh-huh. And uh, it, was a, it was a dude. Oh, oh yeah. No. It was not, he wasn't dressed up. He, oh, so this tell, is, can you go on, online and tell him to stop it? He had an appear. He did something lately, and he posted it side by side of Lois Griffin uh -huh. and him, and basically in that same like khakis and green shirt. Uh -huh. And there's this dude uh, who wears this outfit all the time, and now that's all I'm going to see is Lois Griffin. And then I just think of Lois Griffin's jugs just slapping together on the Jake, side of my screen. You got so. me hot and heavy over here. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm taking out my mic stand right here. It seems today <laughs> that all you see. <laughs> Uh, this is much more comfortable, baby. Yeah, look at that. I'm settling in. Look at this, Jake. Oh, where'd you pull that Red Bull from? That just came out of nowhere. From behind your ear. <laughs> Been practicing a lot of magic. Damn. Should I get up and run around the room? <laughs> <laughs> All right, brother. All right, let's do it. You ready for our stinker tonight? I'm terrified. All right, I have to play this. I'm going to tell you what this guy's name was, what his nickname was, and why they refer to him as this nickname. Okay. All right, I think you're really going to love this. I can't, I can't wait. All right, so the gentleman's name is Paul Michael Stefani. Okay. And his nickname is the Weepy Voice Killer. Don't talk, just listen. I'm sorry 
what I did to Compton. I couldn't help it. Don't know why I had this tavern. I am so upset about it. I keep getting drunk every day and I can't believe I think it's a big dream. <laughs> I can't think of being locked up. If I get locked up, I'll kill myself. I'd rather kill myself than get locked up. I'll try not to kill anybody else. Fire emergency. Please don't talk to him, listen. I'm sorry, I killed that girl. I stabbed her 40 please. times. Kimberly. Can you pause it for one second? Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> What's eerie is how similar that's to me ordering a pizza. <laughs> <laughs> Delivery. If you don't come, I'm going to kill myself. <laughs> how long will this take? I'm sorry, I can't stop crying. <laughs> <laughs> the pizza tracker stopped working. <laughs> Oh my god, that's but, terrifying. Brother, after each one of his attacks, so he mm-hmm. killed three women and he's severely injured too. Okay. So that's that's uh five total attacks after four of them. He sounds remorseful about it. I think there's a few factors that go into okay. that. So out of four of those five attacks, he calls nine one one either immediately or by the next day to talk about what he's done. What and he's done. He had, so he's admitting it. Yes. So wow. it's almost like confession for him. That's pretty weird. It is. Yeah. But that's his voice, and that's why they call him the weepy voice killer. What a shitty nickname if you're a killer. I'm, that's dude, the one you get. To that point, I was looking up. There's this like large database of serial killer nicknames. Yeah. 95% of them are like the fucking Night Stalker. Oh, yeah. The fucking Beltway Killer. Yeah. Like, all shit like that. The but, voice killer. Yeah, it's like, you you <laughs> set out to kill people, you're like, yeah, dude, people are going to remember me. It's like, yes, motherfucker, they are going to remember you as the, the Will Bear Boy. The Will <laughs> Gosh, Shab Boy. <laughs> I want to talk about my name for a second. <laughs> Please. <laughs> Do you think, like, he started doing, like, different voices, like, calling back... <laughs> I would love if like a ra- like a talk radio was able to identify him from like uh, calling in after a Mets <laughs> game or something. Just, <laughs> I think we need to make a pitching change. <laughs> Hi, my name is Paul. First murder, definitely not last murder. <laughs> what a cre- He sounds like the guy from Sixth Sense. You know, you know, in the beginning, he does. Yeah, like that's the that's the vibe of that was getting. a creepy scene, man. Yeah, yeah. That's probably one of the creepiest. We've talked about Zodiac mm-hmm. before. That's probably the creepiest scene for me in a mm-hmm. in a movie. It's clearly unhinged. That did scare me too. Yeah. Yeah, brother. So this motherfucker was born in Austin, Minnesota, September eighth, nineteen forty four. Virgo. Is he really? Yeah. Are you an astrological man? Nah, man. I'm just a Virgo myself. Uh, uh, uh. Yeah, that Virgos. explains a lot. That does explain a lot. I'm for very me. weepy voiced. So. <laughs> Yeah, dude. Have, when was, uh, before we move on, when's the last time you called nine one one? Oh, uh, probably maybe like a, a little over two years ago. What was it about? It was just like we smell fire. That's it, and there was nothing going on. And these fire, these guys, you know, you know how they are. The they love. Thank it. you so much for your service. Don't thank them. <laughs> but I mean, they show up like. 15 cars they deep, love that shit. with their own lights yeah. and they like shut down the whole street everyone's out and then they're like walking through my house with like dragging an axe like stop like seriously these are wood floors don't mess up my floors yeah firemen are like juggalos <laughs> it's like you do realize you're going to hang out in a campground all weekend you don't need all this fucking shit dude they i mean and then the dude the one dude was like being a kind of like being a dick about like my house to the other guy because like about the piss in the bottles. Oh, uh, I have an update for you, buddy. Um, yeah. Uh, so uh, the the fire guy was going like this, like trying to get the other guy's attention without because I'm standing there talking to them. Like, yeah, we smell smoke. We don't know where it's coming from. And he goes, "I'm like, dude, I you're right here." He's pointing to the fucking smoke detectors that I've taken out. Because uh, I was filming a porn and it kept beeping. So. <laughs> you were filming a Latino porn. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, he got your ass, man. Yeah, I was like, yeah, no, I see that. I, I'm going to put a battery in it. But yeah, I was like, you don't have to nod. You can just be like, what's with that, dude? Mm-hmm. What a, you 
bitch. No, I'm just I'm sorry. <laughs> no, let it uh, fly, man. But the uh, the P, you want the P update? Yeah, tell me. Piss bottle update. Uh, piss cup, I should say. Let's be honest, what mm-hmm. it is. Had an accident. What? You spilled it? A big accident. Jake. Dude. I thought you were going to tell me that they couldn't get the hose in the house, so they had to use the... <laughs> they had to hook the hose up to your fucking... <laughs> I wish. Your 800-ounce Gatorade piss bottle. Dude, I... The, by the way, the 44-ounce one, there's two. There's two cups. Jake. I've, I I started franchising to the first floor, <laughs> and I flew too close to the sun. Oh, no. um, I was talking to someone on the phone. Mm-hmm. A lady? Uh, no, my, no, <laughs> no. My wife was upstairs <laughs> sleeping, and she's upstairs. You know, I don't want to go up the steps. I'm on the phone. So I decided now's the time to let loose, <laughs> yeah. pull it out, and piss in this cup while I'm talking to this person. They knew it, didn't they? Dude, I just said I spilled something. I didn't tell them uh-huh. what it was. But, I mean, I f- it was like half a Taco Bell cup <gasps> uh, full of piss. Jake. And I'm just talking like, yeah, you know, I'm just getting things. And then all of a sudden it just slipped out of my hands, dropped on the floor everywhere. I like ripped the curtains down. I'm like, no, 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 no. <laughs> oh, Jake, man. It smells good now, but I've. Uh, Did you learn your lesson? Are you going to use the toilet? I'm used to the toilet from now on. All right, you're potty trained. Uh, yeah. I mean, it took me like one or two more times, but I, I'm not doing it anymore. Be honest with me. Are you wearing a pull up right now? I am wearing two pull ups, <laughs> <laughs> one for the front and one. For the back. <laughs> I thought I noticed suspender pull up on you, <laughs> so I appreciate you you taking my my surroundings into consideration, Jacob. <laughs> Oh, man. It was, uh, yeah, never again, dude. <laughs> uh, and too many people know this, by the way. People were starting to comment about the pee bottles. And uh-huh. like, Everybody does disgusting shit. Yeah. You're yeah, just you open and honest it. about yours. People people shit in old McDonald's bags. <laughs> All of it, Jake. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think don't you feel bad. I think that an apple pie. <laughs> 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 um, but, yeah. Don't act like you haven't done it, and I'm over it. I'm done. All right, I believe you, buddy. This is it. I sound like an addict. <laughs> Can't wait for my episode of my 600 pound life to air. <laughs> They're like, what's this collection of cups in your closet that smell like piss? <laughs> I don't collect them. All right, Just well, it, it, if you did, I'd, I'm sure they'd fetch a pretty penny. All right, brother, back to Paul Stefani. Right. So you heard him being a little bitch boy pussy baby yeah. on these 911 calls. Yeah, very similar to what I just did 30 seconds it ago. It was. <laughs> now, a weird element that, that ties into that is that he grew up one of 10 kids in a strictly religious household. They were Roman Damn. Catholic. Mom and dad were devout Catholics. However, when he was three years old, his parents divorced. Okay. His mom found a new man. He's got a new stepdad. This motherfucker's a devout Catholic too, Jake. How do you find another guy after ten? You said ten kids. Mm-hmm. They were making like all the disciples. How do you? <laughs> how do you get someone to be like, hey, that's nice? He's got to bang out two more. <laughs> yeah. Wouldn't it be cool to have two biracial disciples? <laughs> yeah, it would be. It would be Mike. <laughs> uh, to me, that just says that she's got good pussy. Yeah. You know. Yeah, that'll do it. You got ten kids, and you got guys lining up to fill yeah. your X Man space. Yeah, talk about the gospel. Mm. That good pussy. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> that book of Revelations pussy. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, <Deuteronomy>. around <laughs> me. <laughs> that fire and brimstone pussy. Girl, I want some of that forbidden fruit. <laughs> Wow, but, she's got a Matthew, Matthew. What's it? Paul, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Is that all of them? I don't know. I tried to name them and I fucked it up. Uh, I'm trying to fit my three point one six in there. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, this this bitch is fucking. Yeah. She's got ten kids and she divorces her man, gets a new man, and he's a man of God too. Damn. So, old Paul Stefani. Might be related to Gwen Stefani. I don't know yet. For real? No. Well, here's why I think this. Let me let me play the, another call for you, and I'm going to tell you how I arrived at that conclusion that Hang they on. they may be related. Oh, you f- you find me. I just All right. 
We already passed it. But when he calls, <laughs> when he starts his phone calls, oh boy. Paul Stefani says, don't talk, just listen. Don't speak? Jake. Wow. I have no doubt that they're related. Yeah. <laughs> so who the fuck knows, Jake? <sighs> Does feel like a kind of a tragic kingdom he lived in, huh? I'm regretting bringing this up <laughs> I'm already. I'm so sorry. No, I love it, Jake. <laughs> Danny Here, brother, take yeah. one. Go ahead, go ahead, Dr- dunk it, dunk on us. Danny dunk Dubs just called it bananas. Yes, but dude, on top of getting a fucking stepdad at three, this motherfucker is abusive. Okay. After Paul Stefani gets locked up, he says that the stepdad was very abusive, including launching his fucking stepkids down the stairs. Kind of funny. I mean. <laughs> a little, little, little funny. funny. Kind of fucked up. <laughs> Paul, get up here. Uh, actually, can we do it down here? <laughs> if you could do it from the top step, you could do it from the bottom step. <laughs> he has one of those chairs to bring him up because he can't walk <laughs> after he throws him down. I got one of those for my wife. No, you did not. Yeah, for him blowing her back out. <laughs> <laughs> It's weird. You got it for her, but she still just walks up and down perfectly fine. <laughs> All right, I lied. I got it from her blowing my back out with the strap on. <laughs> Dude. That's the worst part about getting hit with the strap on. It's like when you got to call out of work the next day with a blown out back. They know what happened. Tell me about it. It's like uh, I, carried a t- I carried a very heavy TV into the house. It's like, really? <laughs> 40 inch. Mm-hmm. Why does your hair look like it was being pulled from the back, Mike? <laughs> <laughs> All right, so he he grows up in an abusive home, uh-huh. graduates high school. As soon as he gets out of high school, he moves to Minneapolis, St. Paul area. Okay. All right, gets a job as a janitor, and this motherfucker falls in love. And what year is this now? Uh, this say. is early 60s. Okay. All right, so he falls in love with a lady named Beverly Lider. They have a daughter together. Information on this relationship was kind of hard to come by, but the best I can gather is that the relationship lasted a few years, and then he just bailed on everybody. Just divorced his wife, didn't take care of the kid, didn't didn't fucking pay for the kid, didn't do yeah. anything with this kid, which is probably best for everybody involved. What a piece of shit. Minneapolis. That's all they got is fathers out there. They just got fathers. Jake, what does that mean? I don't know. I I have no idea. They do have fathers out there. They got fathers out there. They got hockey. They had Prince. They got snow. Yeah. Yeah. They did have Prince. Yeah. He was probably like 10 or 11 Mm -hmm. at that time. Dog, when Prince died, I was driving for Uber. Yeah. And uh, I had um, Sirius XM at the time. And whatever station it was. They would normally play Prince. They were just blasting Prince the entire night. And almost every passenger that got in, we would end up crying together over Prince. My God. Yeah. You think doves are the only ones that cried, Jake? <laughs> Apparently, wiggers cry, too. They do. <laughs> yeah. So you were crying every single ride? Most rides, yeah. <laughs> it was a tough night, dude. Dude, good for you. Mm-hmm. Let it out. Mm-hmm. Yeah, sometimes you got to. Dude, I, ch- I changed my screen name to Michael Purple Rainy. <laughs> It's a tough night, dude. <laughs> Did you get any tips for it? Did they mm. t- treat you well? Dude, when I drove for Uber, they weren't allowed to tip you. What? It was fucked up. Wait, no. I leave tips all the time. You can now. Okay. But there was a certain point. Uber. One of Uber's big selling points was no tips involved. Huh. Some people would give you cash, but that was the exception. At the time, the incentive was that you would make bonuses on a number of rides given, so okay. it, it kind of still was worth your while, but yeah. man, on that night the Prince died, there's no amount of money that could have soothed my weary soul, brother. Damn, not even enough to get you a little red Corvette? <laughs> I'm so sorry. Jake, that night I almost called 911, like Paul Stefani. <laughs> Dude, Came very it's, close. It's a terrifying voicemail he's leaving. Dog, that, this isn't just one. This this is after every one with the exception of one of the attacks. So this was at least four 911 calls. In addition to calling a number of media outlets to get them to correct information that they were putting out about him. 
So was this just like a voice he had put on after the murders, or is, was this his natural voice all the time? No, this was a put on voice. Okay. And co- okay. cops realized that, like, when they finally caught him and they were interrogating him, there came a point where, like, he realized he was fucked. Yeah. And I'll get into, like, why he felt like he was in the clear initially, but then at a certain point, he's a fucking moron. Yeah. At a certain point, he realizes, like, oh, fuck, they're going to get me for these killings. And then that's when that fucking pussy ass bitch boy, fucking blown out back, pull it from the back voice comes out. <laughs> I just imagine like him calling his daughter with that voice, the one he ignored in Minneapolis. Oh, uh, imagine like, getting that phone birthday. call. Yeah. <laughs> I just want to wish you a happy birthday. And your friend's like, is everything all right? He's just you, my dad. You only turned 12 once. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to kill myself. <laughs> Dude. I mean, it's pretty intense. Yeah, brother. Listen, if, if you're going to go out there attacking people, you can't be doing this afterwards. It makes me feel better that that knowing that that's a put on voice though, because like if he was like that all the time and he's like still macking it, like got one lady knocked up, like yeah, yeah. You don't want a lot of those running around. No, no, you don't. But it would be fun to see him in every single fight he gets in with a girlfriend bust mm-hmm. out that voice. You know, I thought you said you wanted to stay in, <laughs> or even jail fights. <laughs> <laughs> all right, brother. So he gets his divorce, he abandons the kids and his kid, and in 1977, he starts working at a company called the Malberg Manufacturing Company. Okay. It's a machine shop. Malberg. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> you're wilding out of here, buddy. So, something happens. I think you're, you're, you're fucking wild to begin with, but oh, then boy. something happens when you move halfway to that love seat. Yeah, yeah oh, it doesn't look halfway anymore. <laughs> It looks like an oversized chair, dude. Th- this is th- this is what you should get if you're ever relegated to a wheelchair. You should get a leather <laughs> wheelchair. <laughs> I just can't go through any doorways. <laughs> just have to go in sideways. I just have rollerblade wheels turn. You think that's what happened? Like if two wheelchair people fall in love, they just get a love seat, <laughs> <laughs> or a bobsled, <laughs> like, one behind the other. Yeah, you got to get four Jamaican orderlies. <laughs> Cool Rollings. <laughs> Mike. Yes, that's exactly what we'd have to do. Uh, I thought so, Jake. <laughs> so now that this motherfucker is free of a wife, free of children, and he's living that pervert machine shop life. Okay. He's going to start getting even weirder. You don't say. <laughs> <laughs> December 31st, 1980, uh, there's a Minneapolis woman named Karen Potak. She's out having fun with her friends. They're celebrating the new year. She's 20. She's a college student at uh, University of Stevens Point, which is a school in Minnesota. She's out with her friends. Eventually, everybody's going home for the night. She decides she's going to walk home. And as she's walking home, she unfortunately comes across Paul Stefani. He, um, excuse me, <laughs> but do you have a tissue? <laughs> it's just allergies. <laughs> what was that? You said the date, December 1? December 31st, 1980. Damn. Okay. So it's like New Year's Eve. It's mm-hmm. the, okay. That's right after John Lennon was killed. Oh, right? was it? Like three weeks prior. Oh, no. December 7th, something like that. Oh, wow. Anyway, sorry. I always. Did you know James Taylor heard the shooting? Yeah, I heard that in like an interview. He was talking to someone on the phone, and I can't remember who he was talking to, but it was also like somebody like notable. And he had said like they were they were thinking about moving to New York, mm-hmm. and then that happened. And he's like, ugh, you have to deal with this crap. Mm-hmm. Meanwhile, like John Lennon's just dying on the sidewalk. I imagine, dude. <laughs> but dude, unfortunately, um, <laughs> he attacks this woman with a tire iron. Uh huh. Was that Ted Bundy's move? I don't think so. No. Right. It's normally a triple A move. <laughs> <laughs> but unfortunately, he attacks this woman with a tire iron, and um, he really fucks her up, man. Sexually assaults her, too. And, dude, he, he beats her so badly that when she is found, her brain is exposed. Jesus. Now, part of the reason why they were able to get to her is because he calls 911 after the attack. And he does it. Uh, this is 1980. Um, 
actually 1977 is when he gets fired from the machine shop. Okay. So he hasn't been an employee there for three years, but that's behind this machine shop is where he attacks this woman. He's just lingering at his old job. Is he just lingering there? Yeah. No, I think he just okay. knows that it's deserted at a certain time of night. Yeah. So if he's able to lure somebody back there, he can do what he wants. What a creep. Yeah, so he lures this woman back there. He attacks her severely, and he calls 911, and he tells her that there's a lady there. She's hurt by the train tracks, and that they should go get her. The cops do show up. She's barely alive. They are able to get her to the hospital. She survives. She has no recollection of the attack. And um, or anything, it sounds like she's a vegetable. Could be, man. Brain exposed. Mm-hmm. Do you know what happened to her? Like, if she's like her, current day. Yeah. I don't know what's what's going on with her now. Okay. Jeez. But he calls nine one one and he says there's a girl hurt there. The cops go, they check it out, and she's there. She did survive. So she had a fractured skull, and um, yeah, her fucking brain was coming out. God damn! Like I mean, seriously, like what, what becomes of her then? Like I, I is it like this, I don't know if it's too bad to say, but like in that situation, is it better to just finish the situation? You know, what I mean? like hmm. really, like I'm not like God for like I mean I hope she's okay. No, I get it, man. Like, I mean, as far as like a quality of life, yeah, thing. That's yeah, that's what I'm getting. I at. don't know. Yeah, I, I don't know how much of a life she ended up having after that. Okay. Wasn't until a year and a half later, so June third, nineteen eighty one, he attacks again. Okay. So he goes dormant after calling nine one one, being a little bitch, bitch boy, pussy baby, fucking titty toddler. Yeah, Virgos, we're all this way. <laughs> we're all this way. Titty toddler. Yeah, man, they they do act like that. What's a titty toddler? Well, they're all titty toddlers now with this fucking formula shortage. <laughs> Everybody's going back on the TV, even me. Oh, man, you're telling me. I'm, I've been perking these things up, getting them ready, getting the <laughs> reserves ready. Yeah. Drinking a lot of milk lately. Yeah. I mean, it's a good thing I grew mine out during quarantine. <laughs> Dude, how much money do you think we can make? Donating breast our milk? breast milk? Yeah. Easily 50 bucks. <laughs> yeah. At least on Craigslist. Maybe not through proper channels. All right, let's see what we can do. All right. No, I'm game. All right, buddy. So June 3rd, 1981, he attacks his next victim. It's a woman named uh, Kimberly Compton. Um, He attacks her by a freeway underpass. Now, this woman, she's 18. She's a recent high school graduate. That's a child, man. That's crazy. I know, dude. She comes to St. Paul. She just graduated from high school. She meets fucking uh, Paul Stefani at a diner. She just gets off the bus. Okay. She goes to the diner across the street. She strikes up a conversation with Paul Stefani, fucking bitch boy, weepy ass, pussy yeah. ass, toddler ass killer. Wrong one to strike up a conversation with. They go for a walk. He lures her by this freeway that's under construction close by to the diner. He stabs her with an ice pick. Where did he get the ice? He just had it on his person? This yeah. Time? Oh, my God. He stabs her 61 times. And then, for good measure, he strangles her with a shoelace. Sounds like he was pretty angry at something. This 61 times. You have to take breaks. Jake, what's the last thing you've done 61 times? Oh, man. Buddy. Let, let, me, let me pry into a little bit into your love life. When's the last time you've lasted 61 pumps? Oh, my God. Mike, Never. Because to me, 61 Pump sounds like an R&B album. It sounds like a, a, yeah, an early 90s hip-hop group mm-hmm. with about eight members. <laughs> 61 members. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, 61 members around one white girl on the couch. <laughs> it's polyfro- polyphonic skeet. <laughs> 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 yeah, so... He stabs this poor woman 61 times and strangles her with a shoelace. Calls 911. Shoelace. Again. Yeah. I know, dude. Calls 911, explains what he did. And then the next morning, before police find her, he doesn't give an exact location as to where he killed this poor woman. Mm-hmm. Before police can get to her, there's a group of, of teen boys that are just happen to be walking past. And they find this dead body. 
So they're the ones that get to her before the police do. What do they do? They just call 911? Yeah. Yeah, they call the police. Obviously. <laughs> so police, they're able to trace the 911 call, though. Okay. They traced it to the bar across the street from the diner where he met Kimberly Compton. Oh, wow. So he called from the bar. He called from the bar. Yeah. Because his thing was, and he even mentions it in some of his pussy-ass, bitch-ass, fucking midget-leg-ass, <laughs> like toddler titty sucking 911 calls. <laughs> There's one more thing that is each time. It's great. <laughs> he mentions that he's like, I just get drunk all the time because he can't live with what he's doing, but he keeps fucking doing it. So they trace it to the bar across the street from the diner where they were eating. Mm-hmm. He's long gone by then, but at least they're gaining progress on what's going on. Now, they don't know that these attacks are tied in together. Mike, are they? Like, so if he's calling from the bar, is everyone just seeing this grown man just start crying? <laughs> <laughs> you know, he's like putting a quarter on the bar. Well, I guess <laughs> I'm sitting here and just because that would be. <laughs> Just, just sobbing next to the touch tunes. Just now, John at the bar is a friend of mine. <laughs> He's my drink for free. <laughs> yeah, somebody has to see that, mm-hmm. right? I, I would imagine so, Jake. But I don't know. I've been in some fucked up bars where you could jerk off on the pinball machine and nobody would bat an eye. Yeah, there was one bar around here. This is the only bar that's ever happened to me because clearly, like, I always. I'm oblivious to this stuff normally, but <clears throat> I was walking out of this bar around here, and someone immediately tried to sell me coke. Like, and then they tried to sell me coke again. What like that is she? Later, uh, it's still around, but now it's a completely revamped. Tell me, what is it? It was a uh, Morning McGee. Oh, in Glen yeah, Olden. Yeah, that's oh, no, 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 the one right in Prospect. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh man. Yeah, it's really nice now. Totally. Yeah. Different place, but because when I was in my cocaine heyday. There was a, a Marty's that I used to do a bunch of coke at. Really? Yeah, there was even, there was a time where there was a resident coke dealer. Dude, it had to have been, this was this guy. I okay. heard about this. Well, I had a lady. You had a lady? Yeah. Okay, this was like an older dude. And uh, like it was, we were going to this casino and we were going to get fucked up beforehand. And we stopped there. We got like, like we all did like four or five shots, drank like four beers all within like an hour. And our whole total was like $80. Mm. I was like, and there was like two, three rounds of shots of four. So Damn, Jake. Yeah. We like, yeah. That's a good bar for that, though. Yeah. I haven't been in there since they remodeled because the last last weekend that I drank, which was over five years ago. Wow, that's awesome. That's, that's the bar that I had, one of the bars where I had my last bender in. Yeah. And I went there on a Thursday night with my wife, and we were like two of maybe five people in there. They had the fucking, the windows open, the Phillies on. Yeah. And I remember saying to my wife, like, I wish I could do this every night of my life. If I had 40 bucks, I would do this every night of my oh life. Oh, my God. <laughs> I am <laughs> I'm so happy <laughs> that you don't realize you have 40 bucks every Yeah, night. dude. Yeah. <laughs> it's all it takes for so me. I'm so happy for you. If I had 40 bucks a day. 40 bucks a day? Wait, that's like what the... The Patreon cost a year, isn't it, Mike? <gasps> oh, man. Could you imagine the benders I could have now with a oh, Patreon? no, no. <laughs> <laughs> That's the crazy thing, because when I was drinking and doing drugs, like, I couldn't afford anything, and I still Dude. managed to get addicted to this shit. Dude, you're a magnet. Oh, man. Thank you. Wait, what? No. <laughs> Easy. <laughs> but, yeah, it was probably one of those kind of bars, Jake. <laughs> which I still love. I will always love those kind of yeah. places, man. I love degenerate shit, man. I went I went sometimes I get a little pang every now and again and I got to scratch that itch. And I was feeling it. I think it was last Monday. Oh. I was feeling that degenerate itch. Damn. Want to know what I did? Well, what did you do? I drove to Harris Casino. No, you didn't. I did. Did you really? Dog. I left my house and was back at my house in about 31 minutes. What were you doing? I j- I I just wanted to gamble. Okay. So I went, I was like, all right, I have a hundred bucks that I'm going to play with. You lost a hundred bucks in 31 minutes? Jake, in about eight minutes. Oh my God. I go to the casino maybe twice a year Mm -hmm. and that's, that's my thing. Yeah. Good. Yeah. I don't always stick by it, but like this time I did. Yeah. So I went, 
I lost 100 bucks in about eight minutes. Got back in my car. I did the Harris shuffle. Do you do that walk when you go in the casino? That diarrhea walk? Where you're well, speed walking? Like to get to the casino? Like, yeah. No, I just take my time. You don't do that, Danny? I don't know. I guess that's the way you I'm wired. Diarrhea. Dude, I feel it, dude. It's... Security just lets you through. They don't even check your ID. They're Brother, like, oh, it's got... the Harris shuffle. I feel like I'm floating in that motherfucker. <laughs> But I did that, and I was fucking done in eight minutes. I was like, I'm not going to lose any more money, and I left. Good for you, man. Yeah, but yeah. I got I to gotta scratch that itch every now and again. Yeah. You like gambling? Like, Not really. No. I'm surprised, man. As much as I love drinking and drugs, like gambling yeah. never took for me. I had like a brief run with Blackjack. It was like two months where I was going to Atlantic City most days. Oh, man. Blackjack's exciting. It is. Yeah. When you sit at a table and they all like you, and like you start to work together... To beat the dealer? You ever do that or no? I did not know. Yeah. I am a moron, dude. Now, I, I will say this. like I eventually learned the, um, the basic strategy. Yeah. I got one of those cards when I went to Vegas. And um, when I was heavy into blackjack, the movie Rounders came out. And I realized Rounders is about poker. Uh-huh. But you see, you just I, I pretended like I was one table. of those. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <They're> like, <laughs> hit or stay. You're like... <laughs> Like, Sir, <laughs> everyone's pissed off at you. I don't have the yes. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, scratch my degenerate streak. Anyway, Paul Stefani was hanging out one of those kind of bars which normally spawns that kind of activity. Yeah. So, so sometimes you do bad shit when you end up in those places. Now, one fucked up thing about this, one especially fucked up thing about this one, is after his initial 911 call in regards to committing murder of Kimberly Compton. Mm -hmm. He calls back again a couple days later. Okay. Is deeply apologetic once again. He's like, all right, look, I'm going to turn myself in. And they're like, all right, great, dude. Uh, When can you be here? He gives them a date and a time. That date and time goes past. He doesn't show up. He calls 911 a third time to say that he's sorry for standing them up. And he says, I'll try not to kill anyone else. That's it? Like, he's like, all right, I'll, I'll just try to do better. Yeah, I'm not turning myself in, but pff, you, I'm done. Dude, this yeah. is. Sounds like me in the pee cup. <laughs> That's what it sounds like right now. I won't do it again. <laughs> you sure? Dude, what if you progress to the point where you're shitting in Gatorade bottles? Dude, you guys made that joke about shitting in the cup and. Every time I'm peeing in a cup now, I I think about you it. Yeah, dookie a little. I'm like, oh, I gotta go. Up, why am I doing this? I gotta go upstairs anyway. I could feel it coming. I gotta be Joe honest with you. Collins. I feel like that poop pee combo is the height of pleasure. When you're working with opposing forces, <laughs> you pushing and pulling, <laughs> dude. Dude, it's like it's like a it's like a tug of war with your own genitals. Is anything pulling? It's just pushing and pushing, right? Yeah. No, you're pulling it back. <laughs> It's like when you want to scare somebody with a dog, you let them get close, but not close enough to nip them. He's friendly. <laughs> he just wants to smell. <laughs> yeah, I just, I just let the turd smell my underwear. Then it's back in. All right, dude. So he's he's going to be a bad boy again. So that murder was June third, nineteen eighty one. July twenty first, nineteen eighty two, commits his next murder. So he took a little a over a year off? later. Yeah, nice. What do you think happens during these this time period where people are like, what committing are murders? Do you think they're thinking about murder? Do you think they feel bad? Yeah, I feel like maybe they like the first month is good, like they're like it's out of their system, mm-hmm. and like something will like pop up on like TV that kind of like gets them like like was murder she wrote like a thing then the murder because it just says murder, you know mm-hmm. what I mean? I like, believe just, it may have been Jake. Yeah. I feel like that gets you. You're just seeing the mm-hmm. word and you're like, ooh, I remember murder. Yeah. It's like yeah. when you watch a Taco Bell commercial. <sighs> Your belly starts Taco grumbling. <laughs> yeah. But dude, uh, July. And, <laughs> so say, anytime I see one of those dogs, it's like a, I want a gordita crunch stat. One of those stinky doggies. Ooh. <laughs> you know they got the Mexican pizza back now. Do they really? Oh, brother. Dude, I just did Taco Bell and that's why I had the Taco Bell cup that I spilled everywhere. I haven't seen the commercial yet, but I saw a still photo from Damn. the commercial. You know they have promoting the Mexican pizza? Who the who the Papa John? Dolly Parton. No. Yep. 
just inducted to the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Mm-hmm. It's another lady that I love. Who doesn't love Dolly Parton? Uh, nobody more than me. I'll tell you that much. <laughs> Have you ever been to Dollywood? I would like to go. You guys did Nashville, right? Like you guys no, did me? No. 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 I thought you did Zany. Oh, that was Chicago. Chicago, yeah. Okay. I would like to go to Dollywood. I would give anything to meet her. Listen, I just want to speak on my love for Dolly Parton real quick. Go, go for it. As beautiful as she is physically, uh-huh. she might even be more beautiful as a person. Yeah. That's, so I just want to put that on record. Dolly, if you're listening, if you're watching, I love you, boo. It's always been a dream of mine to grow my tits out like yours. <laughs> I already have, Dolly. Trying to match up with yeah. you, girl. So if you're seeing this, I love you, and um, just buy me a plane ticket to Dollywood, and I'll be there tomorrow. Thank you. I love you. Damn, dude. What would you do if you met Dolly Parton? What would you do if you ran into Dolly Parton and she was just getting out of the shower? My boner would go nine to five, Jake. Wait, I, I think that would mean I would lose any erections. <laughs> <laughs> it sounded better in my head no, when, no. when it came out. Nine to five. It goes, yeah. <laughs> it goes back in. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Uh, yeah, yeah. I, maybe I caught it on a shampoo bottle or something. <laughs> <laughs> Either way, it, it's going away. It shouldn't. It's like Joe Theismann's leg. <laughs> Damn. But yeah, I love Dolly Parton, and one day we will be together. It's getting so hard though. I'm falling in love with so many women that I don't know how to break it to all of them. Can I? Okay, I don't want to say this because I don't want to like make ahead, this Furman. thing. But I think now. Dolly Parton is like the new Betty White. Jake. No. Dude, a sexy Betty White. Well, no. Betty White was... Betty White can suck my fucking stop, micro penis. Stop, She lost it at 99. Yeah, that's what she gets for fucking speaking about a no-hitter before she had it. She didn't speak... Oh, probably her niece or something was running no. that story. Serves so her right. Just propping her around like an mm. NSYNC puppet <laughs> just to get there. Hmm. Oh. Bye, 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 baby. <laughs> All right. So July 21st, 1982, uh, a woman named Carol Kellogg, she shows up at her friend Kathleen Greening's house. They're supposed to have a ladies weekend. Are you familiar with those, Jake? <laughs> <laughs> Go on. <laughs> you know what happens in those. Ladies go away together. Yeah. They take trips. They're so, great. It, <laughs> Carol shows up at Kathleen's house uh-huh. and she notices something's wrong. <laughs> okay. She makes her way into the house, goes to the bathroom, looks into the bathroom, and her friend Kathleen Greening is in the tub and she's been drowned. Mike. Jake, don't you dare smile at me. I'm not smiling at you. You are, you pervert. She w- this wouldn't happen if there was a lifeguard on duty. That's all I'm going to well, say. Well, technically, this does make her a lifeguard, so. <laughs> a terrible one. Please. All right. Now, fucking Paul Stefani has committed this murder. Yes, okay. Now, he doesn't call 911 after this murder. Uh-huh. Please have no fucking idea that it's him. Okay. All right? But I'm just putting this on record. This is his one second murder third attack okay all right totally you know out of his wheelhouse but he does drown this woman yeah um they initially suspect kathleen greening's ex-husband they don't charge anybody but she had a um, tumultuous breakup and they think that it may be him might not (laughs) they're interviewing the husband he's like what do you mean i didn't do anything (laughs) he just has the same voice (laughs) So they th- think it might be him, but it's not, and fortunately they don't charge him. August 5th, 1982, the next victim uh, is murdered. Damn, so now he's like, it's ramping up. Yeah, he's going to full swing. Like, he's, he's getting out of control. Yeah. He meets this woman named Barbara Simons, uh, who's a 40-year-old nurse at a place called the Hexagon Bar. Okay. Sounds like a pretty rough and tumble joint. Kind of place where you and I could uh, suck each other off in the bathroom. <laughs> Break each other's fingers off, shove them up our asses. <laughs> Jake, what bars do you go to, man? <laughs> I don't know. It's Applebee's. 
<laughs> they have but, a good bar. All right, real quick. Let me ask you this. Do you think it's illegal or unethical to bring a newborn baby into a takeout beer store? Dude, I'm not even kidding. This is a joke I've been trying to write forever. One time I went to a beer store. It wasn't a takeout beer store. It was just like a, I guess, a state store because mm-hmm. that's what we have in Pennsylvania. Mm-hmm. And uh, you have to buy beer at these places. Um, there was a baby in a car seat propping the beer store door open with no parent nearby. Oh, my God. Like, it's... And, like, I, I didn't wait. I should have waited, but mm-hmm. I didn't. I just, like, went about... I, there was a, I went into a store nearby, but... Uh, yeah. Holy shit, man. So, no, I don't think newborn should be. Did you at uh, least think about asking, uh, hey, what's up with this baby propping the door open? I thought about it, yeah. but I was like, you know what? I feel like, you know when they say like at a job, if like the trash isn't taken out, you've got bigger yeah. problems? This is like one of those situations where I'm like, there's a baby. If somebody decided that this was a good idea, imagine what happens mm-hmm. when they're confronted with why they thought this was a good idea. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? I have some very bad news for you, Jake. Oh, no. You didn't hear that news story? No, what news story? That baby uh, froze to death. He was cold filtered. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> you don't remember this story? No. L- little Budward Ice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's dead, man. Dude. <sighs> I hate to do this to your conscience, but... Stop you, it. You could have saved Budward. It was a summer day. It was not. It was the winter time. All right, yeah, it was summer, but he was cold filtered. You know how cold those beers get? <laughs> Imagine how cold beers get. Imagine how cold babies get. Dude. It was, I mean. He, that, that motherfucker was ice brewed in the Rockies. Damn. Wait till it turns blue. Okay. So. so. <laughs> <laughs> sorry. Sorry. So if I were you, the first thing I would do when you leave this house Damn. tonight is to go to little Budward Ice's tombstone and. <laughs> And pour some beer on that baby's oh headstone because <laughs> you killed him. Pour some beer on the headstone. <laughs> <laughs> they had limited edition funeral balls that you could get. <laughs> <laughs> it's fucked up, Jake, and you did that to him. I want to do that. That if that kid, that kid survived. He did not. And they have to be like ten now. I wonder that how cool they dead. are. No, stop. His baby's not dead. He is. <sighs> Probably. He is. <laughs> was he fussing? No, he was chill. He was mm-hmm. yeah. Had little sunglasses. No, he didn't have sunglasses, but <laughs> he probably should have. Man. Now the reason why I asked you that is because yeah. I got yelled at by the cashier at the Frontier Saloon. For bringing my infant son in to p- buy a couple of 40s of Old English. Really? Yeah. I I still don't find anything wrong with that. Yeah. Baby needs his baba. <laughs> <laughs> like, there might be a formula sh- shortage, but <laughs> there's no Old English 800 fucking shortage. <laughs> I think that's why she had beef with it. Because if I was buying a fucking, fucking pussy-ass yuppie IPA six-pack, she wouldn't have yeah. took umbrage with it, but... Because I'm a fucking dog. Dude. Listen, man. Nothing wrong. Drinks with, eight ball. Nothing, nothing's wrong with like a little Lagunitas IPA. Nothing wrong with it. Or a Founders. All right, man. John likes his Founders. Rest in peace. Well, I was raised differently, buddy. Yeah. I was raised in the streets, Jake. Like yeah. that baby you killed. <laughs> <laughs> that baby is alive and well. Not, like, all right. That baby's probably on the honor roll right now. <laughs> <laughs> well, keep telling yourself that, Jake. Now, going back to Barbara Simons, she's at the Hexagon Bar with Paul Stefani. She makes the mistake of offering him a cigarette. Now, out of all the people partying there at the Hexagon Bar that night, he's the last motherfucker you want to offer anything to. Damn. He offers her a ride. They're having fun. They're drinking. They're dancing. She's like, you know what? I will take you up on that ride. One thing she does that ends up getting this fucking pussy-ass, baby-ass, fucking toddler-ass, fucking propping a beer store door open-ass motherfucker gets him tripped up is that she tells the bartender I'm leaving with him and hopefully it's a good idea and the guy's like alright I guess now she tells him who she's leaving with I don't know if he knows him by name but he knows him by sight and she was a regular there like the bartender knew her yes she was yeah okay. yeah yeah because if she was just a random person that'd be yeah. I'm pretty sure this place is still around because when I saw video footage of it it was recent really yeah 
So I might have to start drinking again to find out. The old hexagon. Mm-hmm. So she leaves with fucking Paul Stefani. And unfortunately, the next morning, she's found by a paper boy on the banks of the Mississippi River. I don't know where this motherfucker was delivering Wait. papers. <laughs> <laughs> you think fish can read? <laughs> <laughs> Morning, Mr. Grouper. <laughs> Looking lovely, Mrs. Salmon. <laughs> this wasn't in Minnesota anymore? He it is, dude. Oh, okay. Fucking the Mississippi River runs from fucking Minnesota to fucking not. Louisiana. It goes up to yep. Minnesota? Yeah. It's fucking tits the asshole, baby. God. That's insane. Brother, the Mississippi runs like an episiotomy scar. I never taught you that in fucking grade school or <laughs> no or fucking they, they, baby re- remediation classes. They never <laughs> baby remediation classes. <laughs> they never mentioned a episiotomy scar <laughs> in grade school. <laughs> Nowadays, I'm sure they would. Yeah. All right. So this woman was stabbed to death, and naturally, fucking pussy ass, bitch ass, stabbing ass, fucking throwing newspapers in the river ass. Paul Stefani calls nine one one. And admits to stabbing this woman 40 times. He's getting older. Count's going down. (laughs) That's good. Torn rotator cuff. But, dude, in addition to admitting to stabbing this woman 40 times, he also admits to the Kimberly Compton Compton murder once again. He's like, I'm the same guy. And of note, all the victims were wearing a red piece of clothing. So he's like a bull. Wow, you're wearing a red piece of clothing. Did you do this on purpose? Uh, I did not, no. Damn. I'm not scared. <laughs> what do you mean you're not scared? <laughs> <laughs> Although I will say this. I asked you if you called 911. Yeah. When's the last time you did? I do call 911 pretty often. No, you don't. Dog, I would say I average at least two a year. Two a year? You know those signs that say if you see something, say something? Mm-hmm. I see a lot, so I say a lot. What are you saying, Mike? I'm going to say the last two times that I called 911. All right. I was driving home on 95 and there was a lady walking. Oh, yeah. Lady shouldn't have been walking on the street like that. No. Very dangerous. Very, yeah. Did not seem right. Did not seem that she was in her right mind. So I called 911. D- but you called 911 and you left. Yeah, you I'm not stopping stay. for her. See this? There's no way. Because here's what happens. You, you see the double standard? Nope. Here and here's what. Are, are, are babies prostitutes? Sadly. <laughs> There's uh, some hot babies out there. Go ahead, finish that thought. There's a whole world out there of terrible people. Here's the deal, because what happens is, if you're walking on Uh I-95 as a lady, you're a prostitute. No. Jake. Dude, not on 95. If you're walking on I-95? Have you ever stopped on the highway? It's terrifying. There's no way she's putting her head in the car like she's a state trooper. Trying to offer a hand job yeah. on ninety five. On ninety five, walking on ninety five, on the fucking uh, the shoulder. Yeah, no, I, I didn't think she was walking on the median. <laughs> like, <laughs> I, dude, I will say this: the the either the time before that or the time after catching that prostitute walking on my highway, I called nine one one because my wife and I were coming home from a Sixers game, and a car was stopped in the middle lane by the airport they were fighting a fist fight people within this car there were like six people in this car they were throwing shit like somebody was probably being moved because there were trash bags and like uh, a fucking laundry basket full of shit all the people that were in the car were spread out over 95 and they were throwing shit at each other that's awesome well it's not because there are kids involved Oh, no. You wouldn't have gave a fuck, though, because <laughs> they weren't propping open a, a fucking beer store door so you can get a fucking 65-ounce Coors Light. <laughs> Excuse me. It was uh, Zima, Strawberry. No. Uh, so that was pretty fucked up. So to me, bo- like that kind of shit, yeah. legitimate reasons. And I feel like living so close to 95, I'm just inclined to see more fucked up shit. Yeah. You, did you see recently there's people that are stopping on the ramps, like around here and like on the Blue Route, same people, 
just saying like they're out of gas, they need money, blah blah blah, and they're just they're like posting up here like just on shifts, same car, Mm-mm. same people. It's, I'm sending these pictures. <laughs> yeah, do that, man. Those those Facebook groups are really. Yeah, I'll going check it out. I'll, I'll check it out in the morning. My mom. mom. I don't think you're gonna check it out. <laughs> Let me guess. Gangs are flashing their lights at you too. Oh uh, man, trying to initiate you. <laughs> yeah, you know. All right, so. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I love you to just process just stopping what you're gonna wanna say. All right, Paul Stefani. <laughs> so after the nine one one call after killing Barbara Simons, he's um the walls are starting to close in on him yeah. because the bartender gives police a description of him. I don't know that they have his name, but they do at least have a description of him. Okay. And they're gonna start pairing these fucking attacks up. Okay. At this time th- they gather enough uh information to eventually learn his identity. August 21st, 1982, apparently they had just started surveilling him. I think surveilling is a verb, right? Yeah. yeah okay. Sure. They had just started surveilling him. That day, the cops that were tasked with surveilling him lose track of him. What do you think he goes and does? I'm going to guess murder. Tries. Ugh. He picks up a sex worker named Denise Williams. Were they all sex? They weren't all sex workers. No, no th- this is the first a, yeah, one. Okay. And he negotiates a price. How much do you think he negotiated for sex with this lady? Oh, man. How much would you pay, Jake? Well, it's none of your business what I would pay. All right. If I tell you what I'd pay, it ruins all my leverage. Mm-hmm. Um, but I'm going to say he's getting it for, it's 82, you said? Yes. $30. That's a good guess. He negotiate. Well, they negotiate one hundred dollars. Whoa! However, he says, "I'm only giving you forty now. I'm going to give you the other sixty upon completion of the the Murder. the project." <laughs> yeah. Okay. Wow. Gives her forty bucks. Uh, she gets in the car. They do their thing, and then after she has to be dropped off at a certain point, he's like, "Yeah, no problem." But he starts going down a way that she doesn't recognize. She's getting bad bad vibes from this motherfucker. She's like, uh, where are we going? He tells her where they're going. She recognizes the road that he says. However, they're not going in that direction. He pulls into uh, an abandoned car lot. There are houses on this block too, but he thinks it's so far out of the way that people aren't going to see and that the houses might be far enough away as to where yeah. nobody would even re- come close to recognizing what's going on. He takes out a screwdriver and he starts attacking her with it. Now, she's a tough woman. Like, during the course of the attack, she starts fighting back. Okay. As he's fucking stabbing her, she's, like, reaching around on the floor of the car. She finds a bottle. She fucking smashes his face with it. Yeah, it's good. Okay. I like this. (laughs) I like this lady. Well, I'm glad you know you're a feminist. And if you're not a babyist, at least you're a feminist. (laughs) All right? So we're making progress here. Yeah. All right. So she slashes this motherfucker's face with a Coke Uh bottle. And they spill out of the car. He's stabbing her repeatedly with this thing. And she's cutting him up. Once the, when, once the fight starts, uh, progresses out of the car, one of the guys in the house is close by to this abandoned lot and comes running over to try to help Denise Williams. He at least gets him off of her for a little bit. And he starts fighting with Paul Stefani. And Paul Stefani starts chasing him with the fucking screwdriver. The guy takes off. Jesus. He ends up running back to his house. At this point, Paul Stefani spooked. So rather than try to to keep attacking Denise Williams, he just gets back in his car and he takes off. Okay. He goes home. So the the gentleman that helped, his name was uh, fucking uh, Doug Panning. So Doug Panning helps her, goes back to his house, and as he runs back into his house, he calls 911. Paul Stefani takes off, goes to his apartment. The cops come. They talk to Denise Williams. She's initially hesitant to tell them what happened because she's on probation. She doesn't want to tell them she's a sex worker, even though she's been stabbed 15 fucking times yeah. with a screwdriver. Now, Paul Stefani drove back to his apartment. What do you think he does when he gets back to his apartment? Jerk off? No, Jake. I'm dead serious. Like, No, he didn't. Yeah. What, do you think, what else do you think he might have done? He'd probably kill someone because he has a screwdriver, right? And he's just mad. And He's all cut up. Yeah. He calls 911. Does he? Yeah. From his apartment? And says he needs help because he's been stabbed with a Coke bottle. Oh, my God. Mm-hmm. 
Does he like? Is he like? All right, I had enough throwing it in the towel kind of thing, or is this just like he's going to play it off like it's a? My impression is that I think I believe that he might suffer breaks from reality when he's experiencing these things. Okay, because no one in their right mind would be like, okay, I just try. I just stabbed somebody fifteen times trying to kill them. However, they fought back, and it's reasonable for me to contact the police to provide for me to tell them that they committed the crime and for them to render aid to me. Is there, is there like a 911 tape of this? Is he doing the, that's a great voice? question. I, is he like, hi? Uh, yeah. I just got stabbed. Uh, fill in a Coke uh, bottle. We could keep listening. Yeah. No, I mean, this is all the tapes you got. I got, there's 39 seconds left. So let's see if the rest of the, here, do you need that, me to call your phone? It's your, it's a ringtone, right? <laughs> up there yeah that's it so we're not going to find out what he said on that 911 yeah. call where he was all cut up however he does call the police they show up and they're like all right what happened he's like yeah i was attacked by a prostitute and they're like ah well that's funny because we just picked up a lady who's probably a prostitute who's been stabbed 15 times did you stab this lady he's like what you're really going to accuse me of stabbing this lady 15 times they're like all right buddy we have to arrest you they, they arrest him for that attack, and right now they they only think that um, they're only charging him with the attempted murder of Denise Williams and the murder of Barbara Simons. Why would he say what really happened to the cops? I just I just think he experiences fragmented reality. Oh yeah, dude, that's that's the only explanation for it. And who kills someone so close to a neighborhood street? Like in a you said a used. Car dealership, like an abandoned. <laughs> no, car? an abandoned car lot. A ba- was that like, like a parking lot? No. Oh, I'm thinking like there, there's. A, yeah, that's all. Using this guy's a witness. I'm thinking the neighbors are seeing them <laughs> fl- fighting outside. Like, oh look, they're opening back up. <laughs> well, they got two real ones. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I guess it's the President's Day sale. <laughs> yeah. But dude, initially he's he, in 1982. He goes on trial for the attempted murder of Denise Williams and the murder of Barbara Simons. Barbara. Barbara Simons, she was the one in the tub. She was no, she was the nurse in the okay. hexagon bar, oh, okay. hexagon. where we're going to hang out. Okay. <laughs> they start to realize that, like, okay, um, he's the one leaving these crazy ass nine one one calls, and actually, the dispatcher who takes his call when he calls about his face being fucked up recognizes his voice. What? Yeah. So she's that that nine one one call uh, dispatcher is already fucking on it. Okay. Now, with these 911 calls being heard, they're released to the public. When they're released, uh, Paul Stefani, his sister and his ex-wife, they contact police and they agree to testify against him because they're like, yeah, that's definitely him. That's his whiny-ass, bitch-ass, baby-ass voice. Mm -hmm. Yes, that is him. (laughs) He ends up getting convicted and he gets, I believe, 58 years. I saw... One total saying 40 years, but another one saying 58. So I, I think 58 would be more appropriate for all the fucking shit that this motherfucker did. <laughs> Was the judge like, do you have anything you want to say to your victims? When You know when they say that at the end? Uh-huh. When you get pro- he's just like, I just want to say I'm so sorry for everything that happened. And it's just like, all right, all right, can we just move it along? Right. <laughs> so did he... Can we have a male interpreter? <laughs> Dude. I've never felt so tough, like listening to this, especially when the last nine one one thing where he's doing mm-hmm. it, and then there's a male dispatcher. Yeah, oh, uh, right, d- buddy, Jake, I definitely want to add when I call nine one one, I'm a fucking man, bro. Yeah, yeah. You be like, you want me to? Ha- you you say the situation, they're like, you want me to handle it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was very when when I call nine one one, it's very apologetic, not like that guy. Uh, I'm just like, hey, I'm sorry. I, this really isn't like an emergency. We smell smoke. I don't know. It's you're so sweet that I I bet you apologize while eating pussy. 
I'm so sorry that this feels good. Yeah. Mike. If, if I had two tongues, I would eat your pussy and your asshole at the same time. I'm so sorry. I can't do both. Uh, yeah, I need to stop apologizing. I told Jake that if he if he kept apologizing. What were you apologizing for that you need to? Everything. I think I asked you for a beer. Like, oh, yeah. I was like, hey, I'm sorry, Mike. Can I grab a drink or something like that? Yeah, just move the baby out of the way. You can get one. <laughs> But yeah, he he. I told him every time he apologizes, <laughs> I'm going to drink a beer and fall off the wagon. So get ready when I'm on crystal meth in 72 hours. You're it's your know. fault. Yeah, it's me. I'm the one that set him uh, off. You'll be a, a crystal meth. You'll probably be up a thousand dollars at Harris. <laughs> 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 Just doing that diarrhea walk all around. <laughs> That's so funny you refer to your excited walk into the casino as a diarrhea walk. If if I was one of those fucking Olympic power walkers. That's how I would train. <laughs> I would just put I would just put on tiny shorts and walk around Harris all day long. I would love to see you power walk around this neighborhood. Mm. Yeah, I'd be like, man, he's got to go. <laughs> Dude, the uh the fucking um what is that car that drives around that um that records the neighborhood for Google Earth? Yeah, just the TomTom? Like, is that it? The TomTom car? Is that what it's called? Yeah. It was driving around here yesterday, and this very Dale Cook kid goes like, yeah, who put me on Google Earth? <laughs> <laughs> so fucking uh, Paul Stefani, uncle of no doubts Gwen Stefani, <laughs> he, can, he, uh, he is convicted. He goes to jail for a very long time. In 1997, what you going to say, Jake? Mike, I just wanted to say, do you know what I said to the baby? Propping the door open. What did you say, you piece of shit? I said, hey, baby. Hey, baby. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'm sorry. Yeah. So 1997. And I bet it didn't say shit back because babies don't speak. <laughs> yeah. So 1997, old fucking baby talking ass Paul Stefani gets diagnosed with skin cancer. It's pretty advanced at this point, And he, he starts to know that like, oh, shit, this is it for me. So he feels compelled to confess to the other shit that he's committed. He tells cops, like, all right, here's the deal. There's other murders and other attacks you're going to want to know about. However, I'm not going to give you that information until you give me a picture of my mother's gravestone. Very odd. Yeah. They supply the picture of his mother's gravestone. He's like, all right. There's still just a line, a line of dudes waiting to get to her. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> A fluffer line. <laughs> so once he gets this picture of his mother's gravestone, he's like, all right, so there were two beatings that I committed and three murders. And the one that really surprises them is the um, Kathleen Greening murder, the tub drowning, because yeah. they had no idea that could have been him because it was totally off of his MO. Yeah. He, he admits to those, and he says that I'm sick and I'm sorry for committing those. Okay. June 12th, 1998, at the age of 53, oh, no doubt, Paul Stefani Damn. goes up to that 911 call center in the sky. Damn. Yeah. Dies in prison, brother. Just, yeah, good run, though. Yeah, yeah, that's... I mean, when he's talking to these cops a year prior and he's confessing, is he doing this in on like the the voice thing is still what's fascinating to me. I mean, the murders it's, are it's horrifying, terrible, but yeah, it like is. dude, when I was sitting here listening to those nine one one calls by myself, I walked around the house just because like that voice is so creepy that it will make you check the locks, check to see if any burglars are burgling. If you hear that. F- voice normally you're like oh a friend is messing with me like leaving a silly voicemail but then you put it in context of like he's doing this right after he kills someone like yeah it sounds like fucking mrs doubtfire murder <laughs> it was a drive-by fruiting oh <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, dude this is pretty funny too when i was researching this motherfucker um i found an, a newspaper article from now, Minnesota is bordered by Wisconsin. Yeah. And a few hours away, more than a few hours, I think it's like nine hours away, in Manitowoc, Wisconsin, there 
is a, a, a baseball rec league umpire with the same name as Paul Stefani. Oh, no. So I found an article about him just talking about how much he loves umping these games. So, but just imagine if you're a part of like this men's league, you're like, uh, Christ, who we got for ump today? They're like, uh, Paul Stefani. Dude, the murderer? <laughs> Ball four, take your race. <laughs> yeah. He just injects him. <laughs> <laughs> you're out of here. <laughs> Dude, just what an insane person. I mean, probably, right? Like, accurately. But just. Probably, yeah. But one thing that I do like about this is that they gave him the most pussy ass nickname you could possibly give him. That's what I think we should do to everybody who commits a very fucked up crime. The weepy voice killer? Mm-hmm. Like, weepy ass. That's pretty great. I Can I, be, can I ask you a question, Mike? I want you to be honest with me. Yeah, hit me with it. So, have you ever seen comedians in cars getting coffee? I have. Yeah, you enjoy the show. Yes, but I think I don't like the way Seinfeld treats the servers. Really? Okay. All right. That's just on camera, right? He does that. For, no, I don't know. <laughs> it's an act. No. Uh, yeah, he's probably a terrible tipper and terrible person. Why well, say he's a terrible tipper, Jake? I, I uh, I'm not going down that road. Nope, that's not what I meant. All right. All right. So, the reason I asked if you watched. Uh, comedians in cars getting coffee is because like when Jerry has a guest on he picks a car mm. for his guest that reminds him of his guest and now with John M.I.A mm-hmm. you give me the weepy voice killer mm-hmm. I don't appreciate this <laughs> what yeah firm is going to come out I'm going to leave piss everywhere in this room <laughs> I would be like a cat. <laughs> no, that's fine. I get it. All right, who do you want? If this should ever happen again, do you want a really masculine killer? I want the fucking dude. Yeah, I just you want a fucking Viking? No, nah, I want someone with big old boobies. <gasps> the big old boobies. I know killer. you like them titties. <laughs> yeah, dude. Let's give me some the knocker murderer. Like these things, like two of those. Just... <laughs> the sketch artist has to ask for a second pencil. <laughs> <laughs> it just looks like he drew a Venn diagram. Ah, <laughs> oh, yeah. All right, man. I'm going to give you a big titty yeah. lady killer. You like how my yeah? I don't know if I'm reading into this or if I fucking cret nailed it. You decide. Comments. All right. Weepy ass, bitch ass. <laughs> So listen, I don't know any big titty murderers, so <laughs> if anybody watching this is aware of any big titty ladies that have committed any kind of atrocity, please let me know, and I want to hit Furman with it, because I know how much you love your titties, dog. Thank you. I appreciate it. Man, you you probably are the biggest tit man that I know. You think so? I know so. That's an honor, Mike. Thank I know you. it is, yeah. Just an old school tit guy. I'll bet you had <clears throat> one of those gross posters in your bedroom as a teenager. The what posters? Gross posters. With like lady resting like textbooks on her titties where it says shit like study hard. Believe it or not, Mike, uh, I had a picture of a bunch of girls uh, in a truck, but it was just their butts with their, uh, you, mm. know, their you know, they're leaned up a little bit. Would you talk to the picture? That's not your damn business. But yes, <laughs> talk to I, I reckon I recognize that I do this this week, but uh, I talk back to porno sometimes, Jake. No, you don't. I do, yeah. <laughs> you do. What are you saying? I'm not gonna say that. Uh, you have to now. No, I, I I feel like I've given people enough ammunition <laughs> to think I'm unstable. So do so have I. But <laughs> we're putting this together, dude. We're Thelma and Louise and our fucking mental health to these people. Are you? Are you responding like in a conversational way, like you're in the conversation, or are you like just like both, color yeah. commentating? Both, yeah. <laughs> like, oh, and he's about to come. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Damn. Yeah, you don't get in the movies like that. No, I never talk back to the screen. Yeah, dude, I, I act like I'm in a black movie theater when I watch <laughs> porno, dude. <laughs> I like to see you in a black movie theater. They're telling you to shut up the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what if there's black porn theaters? <laughs> Just dudes screaming with their pants around their ankles the whole movie. 
Man. Never talk to porn. All right. Give it a shot. Let me know what you think. Uh, you know, I don't want to dip my toe into that pool. Mm-hmm. I, I feel like that's it's a pretty slip- gross pool. <laughs> yeah. I feel like it's a pretty slippery slope of like, next thing you know, I'm like having real conversations. Here's the thing. But, but when you're in fucking sicko mode. Yeah. Like, you know yeah. that shit just flies out of your mouth. That is true. Like, I, I pray to God that like. My my wife clears her hard drive after we're done porking because <laughs> I regret some of the things I say, buddy. What's the one thing? Uh, maybe you don't want to. Hit, hit me. What's the one thing in porn that, like, if a girl says, you're like, oh my God, this is, that's doing it? Because clearly. If a lady says? Yeah. I don't know if there's anything they could say. Um, I like any anything jizz related. It's what they don't say. <laughs> anything jizz related, like okay. being directive about where to put it. Okay. That's that's actually I would say that's what normally elicits the most response from me. I'm normally like, yeah. <laughs> like the Kool Aid man. <laughs> you start you asking questions like right here, or do you want to right here? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I'm like a like a first day mover. Like, are you sure that this is where you want it? Yeah, right, yeah I can I can put it over there if you want. <laughs> any kind of come direction usually does it for me. Okay. Yeah. I feel like we go right into fucking cum talk as soon as we're done I'm with the serial sorry. killers every week, man. I feel like murder and cum. That, yeah, they do go. Yeah, yeah. They do go hand in hand. <laughs> <laughs> hand in very gross hand. Yeah. Man, this is what John's missing out on. Uh, yeah. Can John? you just wait till he watches this episode and he hears us talking dirty Let's go. <laughs> to each other? <laughs> yeah. I'm. Yeah. Actually, hang on. Keep talking, Mike. <laughs> go ahead. Oh, I thought you were reaching for one of your snacks you keep over there. <laughs> nope. Do you do you honestly have snacks hidden around your house like like weapons? <laughs> like in alcoholic hides bottles. <laughs> Just like you're in my trash can lid and there's like a back mm. Not right now. Not not ever. Mm-hmm. But I the closest I ever got to like hiding food uh was like I would stop on the way home and eat something. Yeah, I bet. And then, like, either just keep keep it in the car or just go, like, throw it in the trash can. Mm-hmm. That's, like, the closest. Just eat the got. trash like a raccoon. <laughs> yeah, just eat it over time. I don't know. <laughs> um, but. Let me ask you this. W- would you do that because you don't want to be disrespectful because you knew your wife cooked dinner? I don't think it was as much disrespect as shame on my part. I get it. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I was hungry. I knew I would, like, eat whatever the hell was coming mm-hmm. up. But I was, like... You know, there's no way of justifying this. Yeah. Yeah. I would do that with, with beer. Yeah. Like, I would come home. Like, I would definitely, like, especially, like, it was especially devious because there were times where, like, I swore off that I wasn't drinking. Yeah. And I would have stopped off somewhere and had four or five or six. And then you go to a wine tasting. <laughs> <laughs> They're like, are you already messed up? You're like, no, no. <laughs> Dude. What would you would you do like a whole case or or like not a case it's like a six pack or not well it would just depend if I was all right if I had some money in my pocket yeah I would normally set up shop and I would just crush beers and eventually hit a point where like okay I want coke and then that would be like my long term nights okay there will there would be times like I there were periods where like I would drink every day um. I would say that, though that ended in like 2012, and I can directly attribute that to just being miserable in life. The two jobs that I had were were high stress, and yeah. I would have off Saturdays and Sundays, but as soon as I woke up on fucking Saturday, I would start drinking fucking whiskey. Gotcha, okay. And that was directly attributable to just how much stress I was under. Damn. However, you know, when I didn't have the stress of those jobs... Then that switched to just benders, and that was my thing. Yeah, and that's where like I would usually get jammed up. So, you know, in a given night, a bender night might only be like fucking ten or twelve beers, but it would usually involve drugs too. And does a bender like does that happen? Like you go into it knowing it's going to be a bender. Sometimes, yeah. Um, the last one I had. All right, my plan was. To go have a few beers with a friend around, like noon on a Sunday, we met up. By four o'clock, I was like, right, "This is going to be a couple days." Holy shit! Really? Yeah, 
just because once the drugs come out, man, it's yeah, nothing mattered, and it's just that it just seemed to be so plentiful. Yeah, like there's times where, you know, it's feast or fam, or it would be feast or famine, especially with coke, where it's like, okay, I know this is it. I'm not getting any more tonight. But then there's other times where it's just like it's like raining from the fucking sky, and on those nights you're like, I'm my heart's probably going to explode, and that's when I'm going to stop. Dude. You really think your heart was going to explode? Like the last time, yeah. Like that was, I mean, on top of like how sad it was too, because I ended up in, I got a motel room by myself just to finish off the coke that I had. By yourself? Yeah, dude. It was like, it, dude, it was like eight in the morning too. It was. Um, do you know the uh, the motel across the street from Best Buy in Springfield? Oh yeah, that one. Okay. And it was like, it was like something like, it might have been like a hundred and twenty bucks. It was more expensive than I thought it was going to be. Yeah. The guy must he might have just picked up on like I just needed a place to do drugs cuz there's no way a place should be that expensive. Might have been 80 bucks, I don't know. Either way it was more expensive than it should have been. And I got the room and it was just like just a bare bones room and I just had a ton of drugs with me. Dude. And I started doing it and uh I just didn't feel good. Whereas, you know, more times it's just about like having fun and just continuing your party. Yeah. But at that time, it was like, it was the combination of like the sadness of the situation started to hit me and then coming up on 24 hours of just, you know, going really hard. Yeah, it seems like you were like trying to like find that happiness like right then and there. Yeah. Yeah. And I I mean, being able to like analyze myself in the time that I've been without drugs and alcohol in the five years, it's like, I know that I'm constantly like trying to level myself out. Um, I'm not like a, a naturally happy person. Yeah. Like I, I don't feel good on a normal basis. Even now, like I know that I made the right decision and you know, I should stay away from that stuff, but yeah. you know, I'm, I'm not naturally upbeat. I'm not naturally happy. It's just, I'm, I was constantly chasing a way to change that. Yeah. So now it's like, I feel like my biggest issue is just anxiety. Like I'm anxious 24 seven. See that's crazy to me because you don't come across like an anxious person. Dog, I'm, I I feel like I'm, not to play drives like a park, but crawling in my skin, Damn, almost twenty four hours a day. You went full, f- yeah. Who knows if these wounds will heal? <laughs> but I do feel like that, where it's just like, and it's it's hard. Like even last night when I went to, I went to go see my favorite bands, Deftones and Gojira. Yeah. I went to the concert. I was at a point like, I was on the floor and off to the side of the stage. There was a clock. And as my two favorite bands are performing, I keep checking the clock because I know how long they're going to play for. And I know when the concert's going to end. And I keep checking the clock and calculating like, all right, they probably got like 25 more minutes left. Then I'm looking over. It's like, all right, we're probably down to about 18 minutes here. Yeah. So it's, it's really difficult for me to just chill the fuck out and enjoy shit. And having the clarity that I do now, I, I recognize that something may be irreparably fucked up with me, but at the same time, like, me constantly consuming all these substances was a way to try to counterbalance that. Are you like when you're counting down, are you still able to enjoy the show? It's hard. Yeah. I have to like force myself because there's like, even I'm, I was having like, it's fun. I had a lot of fun, but at yeah. the same time, it, it's like, I, there were, there were guys there. They're like, you know, in the fucking pit where people are clearly just consumed by what's happening. Yeah. Even though I am having fun and doing the same thing that they're having. Yeah. I feel like I'm in two different places. Yeah. I'm in like fun world and then fucking anxiety land too. Yeah. Damn. So, I mean, but it is what it is. And can you admit to what you said to us before we started recording about how you were just... The sta- end? How, <laughs> how you were just oh, standing around the pit. This oh, yeah, help, yeah, yeah, yeah. This doesn't help your case that you're like, yeah, I was watching the clock intensely. <laughs> yes, I did not look like a normal person because yeah. uh, I will say this. All right. I was angry to begin with, so I probably looked especially psychotic. Yeah, you're at a Deftones concert. <laughs> but, dog, I, I, I got into like a mini argument with somebody at the show. So I was like a little bit psychotic to begin with. What happened? You didn't tell us this? I didn't do anything wrong. Yeah. All right. And I, I feel as though you'll see my point too. So, okay. My wife and daughter were at the concert too. My daughter got okay. there early with her yeah. friend because she wanted to stand up against the railing. Yeah. They got their spot up against the railing. Uh, after Gojira, I saw them there and I was like, all right, I'm going to go get them some water. So 
the only thing they have there is like liquid death and it's like i'm i buy liquid death and it's like three of them are like fucking 27 bucks oh yeah i'm holding 27 dollars worth of water in my hands so i'm walking with the cups together and they're in the front row and i get to like three rows back and there's two guys in front of me and i turn to the one guy say excuse me do you mind if i get past i just want to give my daughter some water and he ignores me and i said it again he's like i'm not moving i'm saving the space for my girlfriend so I said, dog, I'm not trying to take your space. I'm just trying to give her some water. He's like, I'm not moving. So like my psycho bells are like going off. Dude. But fortunately, the guy next to him is just like, dude, go right ahead. So he moves out of the way and I move it up. So I'm staring at this guy as I walk past again. So this is between sets. So I'm I'm in fucking crazy fucking. Yeah, you got the zapples. Right, yeah, because there's no yeah. no need for that. Yeah. Going back to what you were saying, standing there like. I think that might might have added to my anxiety. So during the concert, like I, you know, if I'm not like in the pit, like I'm, I might be taking a break and I'm just like standing there with my hands like neatly in front of me <laughs> like this. And then I like to enjoy the show facing the crowd where everybody else is facing the band. <laughs> I don't understand what's weird about Dude, that. <laughs> I don't understand. That's how I like to enjoy the show. <laughs> you go, Dude, that's. That's nuts. <laughs> I don't see that. Like, just like you get up all close and then you turn around. It's so disrespectful to everyone behind you. <laughs> that would kill to have your spot. And you're just like staring at them. You're like, why is this guy just staring at us? Because to me, like, that's more of a unique perspective. Like, I, I, yeah. like I'm, I'm watching the band. Like, I've seen the band. Yeah. Like, I don't need to see. It. I just want to hear them. So to me. It was more interesting to me to face the audience and see their faces and see, yeah, you know, I get it, like the yeah, That's but it, good I I can understand how it might be unnerving to see one dude who looks like me dude. facing the audience. I mean, and you're staring at a clock, <laughs> <laughs> and you're staring at everyone like any second, any second now, like that's terrifying. You would ruin that concert for me if I was behind you. I'd be like. What is this fucking guy's problem? Like, and then I'd just be like the whole concert, like enjoying, then noticing you looking back. Then I'd be like, "What? Like, mm. what's happening?" Good but, for you. Yeah, I did have fun, and I was That's anxious at the same time. Yeah, it just is what it is, man. Damn. You got a cool shirt. Yeah, dude, I, I did. I really have fun, man. I yeah. wish I could follow them on tour, man. What was more expensive, the three waters or that shirt? This shirt, I think, cost $13 more than those three fucking waters. Damn. Yeah. I would but. have told him to shove it. <laughs> I'm so sorry, Mike. You devil. No, I love it, Jake. Deftones are the perfect band for you, though. Very emotional. Very emotional. Very. One of the biggest songs is Back to School. <laughs> I went back to school for 25 years. <laughs> <laughs> but and we've watched you change, you know. Ah, uh, <laughs> thank you, Jake. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Now go get your knife. All right, All boom. Right. Uh, can we okay, can now okay. Jake, I think it's time for you to be quiet and drive. <laughs> <laughs> God. Uh, yeah, I love them. what's what That's well awesome. you're a Pixies man, right? Uh, Pixies are the yeah. One time I spent $100 to see the Pixies play a half hour. Where is my money? <laughs> they were opening for Robert Plant at The mm-hmm. Man. And I've, I'd already seen Robert Plant. Mm-hmm. He's a legend. He's I, like Led Zeppelin is like my favorite band of all time. But it, Robert Plant is, without Led Zeppelin, it's not the same. You know? Okay. Like he plays a whole lot of love, but it's like pretty chill and acoustic. I heard it though. Would you say they're more unleaded Zeppelin? <laughs> You acting up right now. <laughs> You're bringing it out of me. Yeah, sorry. Uh, it's, yeah. Uh, so that was a, a very expensive half hour. It was me and uh, Chip, we went. And oh, then cool. we just left. But, um, yeah, I've seen them I've seen them a lot. They're not great show people, though. Like, okay. They just play the songs. I don't know. like that. Yeah. So, honestly, the best, so the first concert I ever went to was ACDC, and it was, like, all show, and it was mm-hmm. awesome. It was cool. Um, but the one that's probably my most recent favorite that I've been to is the Hives. Do you remember the Hives? Hey, yeah, I told you. Yeah, so. yeah like this whole like it's all kind of like that kind of punk type of music. Okay, 
and the lead singer is like this over charismatic like just like overly confident like just obnoxiously like you are so, like you guys are so lucky to see us right now like mm-hmm. we are the best band in the world and like he's saying this to the audience that's kind of it's, funny dude, it's so funny yeah. and just like yeah uh they were, yeah they were awesome they're worth checking out danny who's your favorite band You don't have one? Oh, man. No? I'm going to pick one for you. <laughs> I, I've seen Aerosmith the most. You've seen Aerosmith the most? Yeah. Okay. Do you think... I've heard a theory that that's not him singing on Dream On. Steve, I mean, live, it changed. Yeah, yeah. Like, even live, yeah. he sounds completely different on that song. Yeah. Like you two different singers completely. I saw like a justification behind that. You know, you know what we're talking about, right? Like how he, yeah, I know this one. His voice sounds completely different compared to all the other ones. Mm-hmm. And then an article I read was like, that was like him personally writing that song, not in the character of Steven Tyler, mm-hmm. like the Aerosmith frontman. It was like just him being honest, and that's why he changes his voice. Which I was like, if that's for real, that's cool. But like, I think I read somewhere that like. There was a different singer at one point, but I've never been able to find that either. I uh, I had bought my uh, mom tickets to go see Aerosmith and Cheap Trick. Ooh. And uh, Cheap Trick uh, pulled out last second. And instead, they got Andrew W.K. Ooh, that's, that's neat. That's cool... Not for my mother. Yeah. Damn. She left with a bloody nose door and Andrew <laughs> Shut w- up! Yes. Oh, is she recreating the album cover? <laughs> <laughs> That's what I kept saying. Damn. Um, a shoe just randomly came flying back. A shoe did it? <laughs> a shoe and just cracked my mom right in the mouth. <laughs> she missed Aerosmith. No! Like, yeah. Are you serious? <laughs> yeah. Damn. So I love Aerosmith. <laughs> Jake, what shows has your mom gotten finger to? Uh, I can tell you, I... St- uh, my mo- a show my mom hasn't gotten fingered to uh, was the Rolling Stones oh, when no. they came to Veterans Stadium. Her and my dad were supposed to go, mm. and I was such a little asshole. You motherfucker! I I weaseled my way into that ticket, dude. You fucker! Yeah, and I had no regrets. I was in like ninth grade too. I was an asshole, and I was just like I was like, mom, you don't even like the Rolling Stones. She she didn't. She liked a couple of radio songs, but she's my mom. Yeah, yeah that's a nice like parents concert and i took the ticket you fucker and then the best part is like this lady was flirting with my dad during the show uh, the first thing i say to my mom when i get home is dad was talking to some ladies damn she gave that ticket to Furman. <laughs> <laughs> yeah and well listen that's what happens when you start me up bro <laughs> okay i can do this for every <laughs> musical artist so i apologize you got any uh, tickets for shows this summer? No, I want. Uh, there's so many I want to go to. Same. Yeah, like we mentioned some before, like Turnstiles coming next mm-hmm. week. Uh, Nine Inch Nails. I think I'm going to go that one. Although I don't know. So Turnstile and Nine Inch Nails are this the same night. Although Nine Inch Nails is doing two nights, but the one night we're recording next week. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, um, I would love to see both of those shows. That would be yeah. They would be good shows. Um, I don't think yeah. I, I'm open to seeing anyone. Pearl Jam's coming in September. I'd like to see them. Hmm. But, yeah. How about you? Anybody else? Yeah. Do you know uh, Sigur Roche? No. Oh, yeah, yeah. There's, are they Iceland? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. They're coming to the Met. You're going to see them? Well, I just saw that they were going to be, when I went to the Met last night, I saw that they're coming June 7th. So I might go to that. That would be a nice one. The Met's just a very nice theater. That yeah. might be a nice one to just go and get a seat and sit Dude. and enjoy it. You want and, to talk about getting fingered at a concert. But I can't face the crowd if I sit in a seat. I think you could. Sit on an A.C. Slater style. Like turn it backwards. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like I'm fucking giving a presentation at a school about the dangers of drugs. Mike, why not get like the uh, why not get the um, ADA seats and then just oh. rent a chair and then just turn the chair around? Mm. Imagine being on stage and seeing that happen. You know, as a comedian, like they say, like the one thing you focus on is that one person not laughing. Mm-hmm. Just imagine the one person with their back turned the whole time. Oh, man, 
Would you be willing to push my chair into the venue? Man, I would I would be more than willing. Oh, thank yeah. you, Jake. I love you. Hey, the feelings are mutual, pal. I Can I touch you. the coin? No. All right. Not that much. I mean. <laughs> <laughs> All right, brother. Well, Kaudan Jala, we missed you, brother. But Furman, Danny Dubs, I always love spending time with you guys. And yeah, buddy, I'm sorry, but I don't think that's weird, Jake. Ah, dude. Okay. You know what we should do? We should do the Instagram contest where you guys tell us how weird it is. <laughs> should send us your concert pictures of you standing in the <laughs> opposite direction. <laughs> and that's how we'll decide the winners. <laughs> I, it still doesn't make sense. I heard that, like, who was it that, what perform? was it Maynard who does that? Or somebody Jim. somebody who's notoriously a dickhead. It might have been Van Morrison who... Jim Morrison. Jim Morrison. Yeah, he would okay. always yeah, have his back to the crowd. Yeah. But then at one point he'd jump around like, yeah. and then fall on the ground. I thought he uh, notoriously like showed his dick. He did. He got arrested for that in um, Connecticut. Uh, where in Connecticut? I think Connecticut and Florida he did that. <laughs> he pulled it out. Sounds about right. Yeah. yeah. Hartford, I think. Well, I hope I get recognized as the first one to have my back to the band. <laughs> you just feel a dick land on your head. <laughs> <laughs> Should have not seen this Doors tribute band <laughs> here at the Hexagon Lounge or whatever the hell it's called. <laughs> All right, y'all. Thank you for watching. If you watch us on Patreon, thank you for becoming a patron. We appreciate you guys and can't thank you enough for your support. Uh, it enables us to do things like Go buy beer while infants are holding the door. <laughs> so Go to concerts and be an absolute fucking weirdo. So we can't thank you guys enough. If you're not watching this on Patreon, please consider joining us at patreon.com slash little stinkers. That's L-I-L-S-T-I-N-K-E-R-S. If you're a patron, you get every episode early. You'll get additional episodes. You'll get mini stinkers episodes. I think yeah, when we record next week, uh, I have a mini stinker for that one. Yes. Too. So we'll do a full episode and a mini stinker. Alive? And, yeah, she's alive. Ooh. Um, I'm in love. If she has big boobs, I'm gonna be very upset that you. Waited I don't. Away. She doesn't have big boobs, Jake. That's, but, a, that's a big stinker. You know <laughs> she doesn't have big boobs, but she did something so fucking insane for her man that I guarantee you, you will fall in love with her. I already have a prediction on who it's gonna be. Who is it? Should I lock it in the vault? I don't want you to give it away. Tell me. Dude. Okay, I'm just gonna close my eyes and make the guess. Is that all right? I don't I, understand what that does, but I don't know what this does either. I don't want to see a reaction. I still want it to be a surprise next week. But you can let the crowd know. Uh, you know, the crowd that you're facing. Um, <laughs> is it, Dude, it has to be the astronaut lady that went across. That's, it has to be. Okay, I'm, that's it. I'm going. I'm going back. All right. All right, man. Glad you did that. If I'm right, what do I get? Your dick sucked. <laughs> so I'm not right. <laughs> He's right on the nose, baby. Uh, but yeah, if you're not a patron already, join us. You get all that. For, you get all that stuff, and then we do a live AMA every month, which is a ton of fucking fun. But yeah, next week patrons will have the fucking full episode we do, in addition to the mini stinkers episode. And I can't wait for people to see that, and I can't wait to cover this lady. I'm falling in love every fucking week, Jake. Dude. Thank God I got a break th this week with this fucking dickhead. Yeah. But man, my heart. Is already being pulled in a thousand different directions. My heart is being pulled in a thousand <laughs> different directions. All right. Furman, Denny Dubs, thank you guys so much. All right, guys. Have a great week. Love you. Thanks, guys. <laughs>